What's going on guys, Justin Miller here with another vlog coming at you, except for today. I am not going to be doing a vlog today, I'm going to be doing a tutorial because you guys know that it is Friday today and you guys are going to get another hip film tutorial because that's the editor that I use and I know no other editor besides iMovie. Um, but yeah, so today I'm going to teach you how to do a cool text wipe effect. Um, not really sure what it's called, but I'll just put it on screen here. <laughs> To teach you guys how to do that it's really basic and it's a really basic animation skill that you guys can learn and um once you guys learn this you can there's thunder in the background i don't know if you guys can hear that or not but um it's a really easy animation technique that you can apply to other things and um apply this to other text editing stuff so you can do other animations but it's just a really basic one similar to a linear wipe but i'm going to show you how to make it not look like something that you made in Windows Movie Maker, so um, let's get right into it. All right, so we are in um, Hit Film. As you guys can see, I already have a couple of things queued up, and uh, uh, not really queued up, but basically what I do, what I have is this um, image that I made in Affinity Photo, which is um, Photoshop, basically. But what I did is I just made this quickly in there. It's just my name, um, and then I put like a logo, like a box around it, similar to Supreme with the BOGO. That's why it's called BOGO, a.k.a. Box Logo. So we're going to go into this composite shot. Um, actually, I'll make one from scratch since I don't mind. All right, so you click Make Composite Shot. Make sure that you set it to whatever you want. I'm going to do 24 FPS because that looks good. Um, so we have it here. You guys can see there's a checkerboard around it, which means that it's transparent. So now um, this is a really cool thing is you just um, pull down the, click the tab down here. And it brings down like a drop down menu and then you're just gonna click this little rectangle with the four dots around it oh what hmm. oh yeah make sure that you select masks and then you just drag this all the way around it I generally do about this size but you can do whatever you want it really doesn't matter um so now you have your, your mask so you're gonna want to go ahead like a couple of frames like a decent amount like maybe I don't know like a little bit ahead um you're just gonna want to change it depending on what it is and um go to your shape go to your mask and bring down the drop down menu below that and just switch the position keep the yeah keep the position at zero zero and go set a keyframe here and then go back one or go back like to the beginning or whatever and not the scale i didn't mean to press scale what the heck um the position click position make a keyframe there and, drag, and then go back to the beginning and drag it all the way over, like, like until, like, you can't see the text anymore. Because that'll mean that it'll, like, sort of, like, wipe in, I guess, if that makes sense. It kind of doesn't, but oh well. So you can see it looks like that, which is okay. It just looks, like, kind of boring. So you're going to want to drag these two keyframes closer together, keeping in mind that you need to have the very first keyframe on the end so it'll actually start. And then just keeping it the same. Um, and then you're going to want to do the inverse of this, meaning that you're just going to want to go ahead maybe to like five seconds or so. About, yeah, about there. And you're just going to want to put the position at zero and tip that in. Um, I'm not going to do that way. But there, you can just copy and paste your keyframe. And then go over a couple of frames. Um, just making sure that you put it all the way. Pull the mask with the position. Um, all the way over like that so you can't see it anymore and just bring it like a little bit closer because you want to be to be like fast like that um, so I'm gonna bring it just like a little tiny bit closer because it looks better that way so yeah um another cool thing what well, do you see that flash of lightning that's cool Anyway, so what I do sometimes, oh, anyway, so sometimes what I do is right when I get to like some of these last letters, I'll, dr I'll bring this number like upward more, like, um, like to like closer to zero. So right now it's at like, it was at like negative 200 and now it's at like one negative 90. So what it will do, it'll go like this and then it'll slow down. So it'll like, 
yeah, and then we're just gonna do a soft render. I never actually knew about this tool until I learned a little bit more, but a soft render, what it does, or I'm not sure what the technical name is for it, but what you do is you just click this little like start button right here, and it'll render it in like the full time, like that. That's what it'll look like once I finish this. But you're essentially gonna apply the same tool, but the inverse of it, so you're gonna drag this closer to zero. So this way it'll go slow and then speed up. Like that. Um, so um, that's basically all that you have to do. You can do a couple of more things, which is what I do um, to make it just look a lot better than a, just a linear white. Um, another cool thing that I do is a luminance key, which basically it'll take the certain color, or not certain color, but certain brightness and take it out. Um, so as you guys saw, like the text was transparent. Since I didn't make the image like that, I can just key it out. Um, you can do this without having to like actually, like, um, what's the word? Like, if you like don't want to do it in the software, you can do it when you make like the actual image. But I didn't do that because I didn't think of doing that. But you just drag and drop luminance key here, and it'll select, like, the it'll automatically do whatever the darkest is. But you can do key out brighter as well. And this will just keep the black. But I'm gonna do that one because that looks better. Um, yeah, and then the last thing that you're gonna want to do is before you put this in like your um videos is just turn on motion blur. You know, you you guys always gotta turn on motion blur. I mean to be honest, like in any video, any tutorial, I'm gonna tell you to turn on motion blur. And that just gives it like a realistic looking effect. But then um once I put it in like my actual timeline, I just put like an image behind it since it is transparent. It's a time lapse. Now what I did here is I put let me turn on my speakers, I didn't have those on. But what I did is I slowed it down, or no, I didn't slow it down. What I did is I sped it up right here. This part sped up 150%. This part's just at 100%, and this part's at 150. So this it'll like slow down. It'll yeah, like slow down when the text appears. And then I just put a whoosh noise. Whoosh noises sound cool, so like that. And it just makes it look pretty cool. And thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure that you guys leave a like. Leave a comment for videos that you want to see tutorials next time. Um, I'm thinking about possibly doing like a text message bubble, um, but I might not. It all depends. And um, yeah, leave a like and I'll see you guys next time.